So in this unit, we're going to start with um, some exploration and um, some things that are um, a little bit more theory. So you're going to see that a little bit in the beginning. Um, so the first day, or actually before we start anything, we're going to write our last name and our first name on the notes. Um, and then we're going to be, you notice it's clearly a lot labeled what topic it is. Um, and this is the topic that matches um, the course exam description from the College Board. So we're exploring accumulations of change. Um, our essential question is, what is the meaning of areas associated with the graph of the rate of change in context? And I can explain the meaning of the area of the graph of the rate of change in context as our I can statement. So um, we're going to start with a few questions here that introduce the, an important idea, and that's the basis of today's lesson. So um, in example one, the graph of f prime, the derivative of the function of f is shown at the left. Um, if f of zero equals zero and f prime of zero equals one, which of the following must be true? So we have to figure out which, one, which ones are actually true. I see a graph of the derivative and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw myself a sign chart. Just so I can understand where is the graph Increasing, decreasing, see if there's any relative maxima or minima. So I know I've got a, I'm starting at zero. I know I've got a zero at one. Um, I know I've got a zero at two. And I know that it kind of ends somewhere at three or infinity, something like that. You could write either one for our purposes here. So I know that I'm looking at above, below on this one. So I start above. I'm still above in the next interval. And then I go below. So the only thing I can really conclude from that graph is that I have a relative max at x equals 2 because I'm going from increasing to decreasing. So that means that I do know that the value of y at 2 is greater than the value of y at 1. So that one is for sure true. Um, looking at statement 1 here where f of 0 is... Um, greater than f of 1. They tell us in the in the question stem that f of 0 is equal to 0. So if f of 0 is equal to 0 on my original, and we know that the function has to be increasing right away, there's no way that my y value on 0 is going to be bigger than, than on 1. So that one's definitely false. 3 is a little bit trickier. Actually, so if we know that 1 is false. We can get rid of answer choice A. We can get rid of answer choice D. Um, we know we can't be 3 only because we know we have to have 2. So it's either B or E. So um, 3 is a little bit trickier. And remember, we're looking for absolute truth here. Um, nothing that it, it might be true. Um, so it's saying that 1 is greater than 3, where we know that it's increasing on 1, and we know that it's decreasing on 3, but we really don't know where that, if that lands us, if this increasing on 1 here is greater than the decrease on 3. We don't, it's kind of inconclusive. So in this one, we can't really tell if it's actually true. Um, so we would say that if for our purposes here that it would be false. So we're going to say that it, the answer to this one is just B2 only. Okay, let's look at example two. A particle P moves along a straight path with a constant velocity of two feet per second. The graph of V of P of T, the velocity of P of the tar particle P at time T is shown to the left. What is the total distance the particle traveled from t equals 0 to 2 seconds. Now, you guys have experience with this. This is kind of an intro lesson. We know to get total distance, we would have to do some kind of integration process. Or, but really, remember what integration is, is the area under the curve, which is a good reminder. That's why we're doing some of these early lessons. So really, to find the area under this curve, I just need to figure out what the area of this is. And hopefully, you notice that it's a square. OK? So that um, square's area is 4. But we need to figure out, the point of today's lessons was to figure out what is the meaning of that. So we know that this t axis is measured in seconds, and the v of t axis is measured in feet per second. So what this area is representing is it's representing the total, is representing the feet that the particle traveled. 
So we would say results in four feet. And we would probably want to say is the total distance the particle travels. All right. Um, I unfortunately cannot take credit for writing this problem. I borrowed this problem. So the new pop music group sensation, Sir Isaac and the Newtones, have released their latest single on all major music streaming services. Its first 10 weeks of release, during its first 10 weeks of release, the rate of the number of downloads per week in thousands of units is modeled by the function D of T, whose graph is shown at the right. How many total downloads were purchased during the 10 week period? So again, we're going to look at the area under the curve um, and between the curve and the horizontal axis, we're going to find those areas to actually find out the total number of downloads that were purchased. So the first shape I see here is a rectangle. So to find the area of that rectangle, so that would be the area on the interval from zero to four. I know I would multiply four by three which gives me 12. So that's this area here. The next shape I see, oh, that was not the color I wanted. The next shape I see is a trapezoid. So this is the area on four to six. And so the trapezoid I know is one half. I add my two bases together, which are these, this and this. So my one base is three. My other base is one, and then I multiply that by the height of the trapezoid, which is kind of laying on its side right now, which is two. So these guys would cancel, and my area of that section would be four. And then I see one more trapezoid right in here. So I'm going to do the area from six to ten. So again, I have one half. The height of my bases are one, and then this height here is nine. And then my um, height of the trapezoid is four. And then two goes into four twice, so 10 times two, which is 20. So my total area is, I would add those three numbers up. So I know that we'd have 12 plus 4 plus 20, which equals 36. But what does that 36 really represent? Remember that it said that it's the rate of the number of downloads per week in thousands of units. So we would know that this represents 36,000 downloads. And those were purchased over the last 10 weeks. Over 10 weeks. And then the last question is just kind of thinking about it because we're going to get into this more tomorrow. So let's revisit a similar situation that was presented to us back in example two. A particle Q moves along a straight path with um, the graph of the velocity of the particle Q. Um, Q sub V of T at time T is shown at the left. How would one go about finding the total distance of the particle traveled from zero to two? And again, we've got a curve, we've got a graph, we, can, we know we just have to find this area under here. Well, unfortunately, we don't have a nice pretty shape, okay? So um, we know we're going to have to use some other techniques in order to find um, that area under the curve. So that's where we're going to go to tomorrow. So remember when we're taking notes, um, you're supposed to be doing a summary at the end. So you need to summarize what we've done in about two, a minimum of three sentences. And then um, between every essential question and um, the summary, you need to have two comments or questions to annotate your notes with. Um, the assignment today is going to be kind of more of a, you're going to watch another video and then um, do a few questions on that because we're building up to some review that we need for a lesson later in the week.